In most of my workout videos, I always get the same question. Alex, how come we never seen you do lateral raises yet your shoulders are so round and huge? Isn't isolating the side delts mandatory for acquiring that 3D pop? Well, before we dive into this topic, know that if you do care about maximizing shoulder width, then obviously, including some form of lateral raise is optimal. And even I did them for years to build a base and stopped at the end of 2016 where I peaked at 85 pounds on the power version. Definitely bad form, but the body English did a good job of balancing out the strength curve since we're weakest in the shorn position where most attention is present. And for the textbook version, I used a good 30 to 35 pounds for moderate repetition. So it wasn't weak and can admit that my side delts did respond very well. So then, why did I completely drop this effective exercise shortly after? I can't remember all the exact reasons, but the main one is that I was scared of potentially having shoulder problems since I was constantly maxing out on rather sketchy presses while mixing in higher volume. So I temporarily swapped out all lateral work in favor of posterior. And the primary exercise I did was the band face pull along basics like reverse flies, reverse pec deck, variations of cable face pulls, etc. Now, here's where things get interesting. Not only did my side delts not shrink, they actually got bigger. And I didn't notice any slowdown of progress. So I just kept at it for months, which eventually turned into years. And OGs will recall this face pull phase. And one day, I woke up and realized that I didn't need lateral raises. The face poles were a two-in-one banger, indirectly growing my side delts in the shorn position. By the way, when I started sharing this information, some subscribers were sending me EMG data from Brett Contreras, which confirmed my anecdotal experience. Specifically, banned face poles beat lateral raises. And every rear delt exercise demonstrated a decent amount of side delt activation, a splashover effect. Funny enough, Brett was surprised with the takeaways, but I wasn't. Now, besides results, this shift in focus taught me another crucial lesson, and that is the rear delts are incredibly important for rounding off the shoulders. Many lifters don't know this, but you can actually see them from a front view. With enough muscle, when you're flexing or leaning forward, the effect is extremely apparent. Then from the side profile, the front and rear delt contribute together for the outward extremity width. So really, the side delts primarily impact broadness protrusion from the front view and cap separation between the arms along other heads of the delts. But keep in mind, they're one third of the delts and generally most stubborn, which explains why a huge percentage of naturals will still have overall impressive development without necessarily having the biggest side delts. In addition, understand that the shoulder is the largest muscle in the upper body. And since front delts get abused in all our presses and have the highest growth potential, that's obviously what matters most for growth. The rear and side finish off the sculpting, but between those two, the rear should technically be easier to build, which I'll get into. Plus, there's always indirect side delt stimulation. So let's talk more about rear delts. In my case, I just mentioned isolation work, which was very helpful, but the truth is, that's not the main thing that blew mine up. In reality, it was unintentionally doing rows with improper form for years. See, I'm a huge fan of performing opposite movement patterns for structural integrity and preventing muscular imbalances. In the case of the back, I was focusing on bench press specialization and therefore always use a rowing technique that matched the arm angles of my pressing, which is tucked at around 45 degrees. That's the best way for optimal leverages and safety. Of course, that's exactly what I replicated on rows. And at the time, I thought this was more upper back since the bro science consensus was that flared arms equated to more rear delts. So it also fit in nicely to my yoke philosophy. Now, the thing is, as biomechanics has expanded, it turns out that this reasoning was backwards. In truth, the rear delt fibers run at a 45 degree angle and are biased the most from this exact style of row. Basically, flared arms equals more rhomboids and traps, fully tucked in a neutral position is lats, and right in between is rear delts. And you can even feel it if you try it yourself. So as you can imagine, doing a rear delt bias row for years resulted in pretty good development. And this further indicates that they're a strong muscle with tremendous growth capacity. So this accident, has led me to conclude something that minimalists were low-key right about. 
getting strong at presses plus specific rows equals enormous shoulders. It's literally that simple. And when I look at history, particularly among the old school natural bodybuilding legends, pretty much all of them did the same thing. In fact, I recently learned that the one and only Reg Park was frequently asked the same question as me on how his shoulders were so big despite not emphasizing lateral raises. And guess what? His response was practically identical. He built his shoulders through traditional pressing and pulling combined with the chest expander, which works the entire shoulder complex. Oh, and uh, I can tell you that my delts were sore as hell the first time I used mine. Now, it's true that he also included cheat lateral raises, but those were never the main focus. And I've done those two in the past, as I talked about earlier. And even when I reread books like Dinosaur Training, all the names mentioned acquire both the shoulders by running the same methods, just getting big and strong at the compound movements. So many were weighing under 200 pounds, yet over pressing in the 200s. What does that say? And now that you know this information, who are you gonna to listen to moving forward? Real naturals who paved the way that unquestionably works, or juice heads who are literally preaching the complete opposite philosophy. Also, consider that the shoulders respond best to anabolics given the androgen receptor sensitivity, and it makes sense why, for some reason, the best naturals of all time can't match the side doubts of many modern moderate users. Is it because they required wisdom from the Death Star delts? Absolutely not. They're just built different. One is hypogonadal, the other isn't. So the only advice that's genuinely helpful is what are the best compounds and how much should be taken? But seriously, many rambling aside, just look at me. I'm not a freak of nature and my shoulders used to be way smaller, but now they're quite dominant. I think that says a lot considering I'm one of the few naturals on this platform who significantly improve without doing ladder raises, yet my delts can hang with the top dogs. It's to the point where I wouldn't be surprised if people started calling me a liar, claiming that what I did is impossible or that ladder raises must have been done off camera. And then they point to a little B-roll clip that's not actual training footage. Listen, I got nothing to gain by being transparent like this because this is the long and hard way. Plus, I already said that you should do lateral raises if you care about optimal development. That said, one thing I wanna point out is that even though isolation work is extremely important, so include at least one exercise for the side and rear, I still believe that presses will work your side delts to a certain extent. I fully reject the claim that there's zero stimulation. It's certainly less than isolating, and some presses work them less than others, but if trained correctly for long enough, the absolute loads will lead to indirect growth. Like, you can't tell me that only the front delts will grow from taking one's overhead press from 135 to 225, or a 50 pound dumbbell press to 100 pounds. Even the data indicates clear activation, and I greatly appreciate Jeff Nippard mentioning this fact in his science-based full body workout. This isn't an opinion that I personally share. First of all, even though the front delts will be carrying most of the load, it isn't like the lateral and rear heads just completely turn off and go to sleep while vertical pressing. Just look at this figure from Sater Backen and colleagues. In the standing barbell press, even though the front delts were the most active, you're still seeing significant activation of the side delts and some activation of the rear delts as well. In a way, this kind of reminds me of those who talk trash about low bar squats for quad development. Even though there's minimal knee flexion and it's the least quad biased version, the fact remains. Serious lifters build tree trunks from low bar due to the heavier weights used. The consequence is a worse SFR ratio, but that doesn't change hypertrophy outcomes. So my point is, getting strong overcomes a lot of faults from specific exercises. You don't need the perfect function for every muscle, and this includes side delts. Also, presses will hit them, especially if you're mixing in different variations for a greater splashover effect. Oh, and by the way, you'll still be able to lateral raise respectable weight. This has been my experience, and it's not because my strength somehow maintained from years back. It's that strength is strength. Like I'm doing three sets of eight to 10 with 185 on the seat of press, which is a good 40 pound jump from the previous year. Of course, there's going to be some transference to easier isolation work, and it's not a coincidence that visually my side delts look better. This shouldn't surprise anyone who's strong and knows what these weights feel like. And for those who may comment that these results 
are just fat from bulking, again, here's some lean as pics where the side delts are prominent. So look, I'm not trying to be negative, but this is how I honestly built my bolder shoulders over the last six years. And in recent times where much improvement took place, I'd have to say that compound movements have done even more for me than face pulls and little isolation work. In fact, I've actually been quite lazy on that stuff as seen in my upper body workouts. And even then, net progress is fine. So I really do believe that presses are king. They're not overhyped like what some skinny TikToker might tell you. Finally, as a fun little bonus point on why I don't do lateral raises, I must admit that natural hypertrophy truly inspired me with one aspect of his berserker mode philosophy. I'm referring to overdeveloping the arms, particularly biceps and long headed triceps, while making sure that the shoulders are well sized, but not too big. The key is that they're never larger than the upper arm, otherwise they can create an illusion of continuity, aka the tube effect, or just dwarf them. From a proportion standpoint, that's valid and can absolutely make your arms look even more massive than they actually are. Now, what's interesting is that NH will oftentimes shrink his shoulders on purpose to further exaggerate this look, but not necessarily all the heads. So in my viewpoint and what you likely figured out is that if we're trying to minimize outwards popping of the shoulders, what's the first exercise that's gonna go? Lateral raises. And that's why I'm not really bothered by skipping them anymore. I've been torso dominant my entire lifting journey and shoulders already look amazing. So why not embrace this illusion? Of course, if I want to be totally true to it, I'd also minimize vertical presses, but I got strength goals and don't mind the extra mass there. So honestly, this is the number one reason why I haven't done lateral raises this year. I was planning on emphasizing them right after my cut, but since speaking with NH, I've become indecisive. And seeing how I've been fine all these years without them, I figured I'd just continue that way. Overall, aesthetics are subjective and we all have different muscular weaknesses. Visually, shoulders are no longer my problem area, so I don't obsess about them like I used to. For you, it might be different and that's okay. Don't copy me if what I'm saying doesn't apply. Feel free to demolish those delts to the great beyond and go full on, freeze the mode. Whatever makes you happy, at the end of the day, we're all trying to get swole. So with that said, I hope this clarified why I haven't been doing side raises. Let me know if you can relate to any points I raised, and I'll see you in the next video.